I'm going to show you how to turn this glow-in-the-dark bulb light. Woohoo! Stop! What are you doing? What do you mean? We need to show them how you made the bowl blank. Here we go. If we do need to show how we made this blank, we also need to know who's this guy in my shop talking to me. First thing I have is an awesome piece of wood from Worldwide Burl. I stabilized it in my shop myself. I 3D printed that thing that goes on top of that cup so it would center itself inside of that bucket so we would save resin. I also filled that cup up with BB so it would hold the wood down to the bottom of the bucket. It turned out pretty cool. So we also have neon colors from Eye Candy Pigments. They'll glow underneath the black light. So we just get here. We are on a live show right now, so I kind of have the volume down because we have people talking and my daughter's helping me and she's always got to be saying something also. So I'll try to put some sound effects behind that to make it funny at least. But we poured those in there. There's a technique that we use. We teach it on the live show that we do. We do it every Saturday morning. It's called Saturday Morning Cartoons. So we get this thing in the pressure pot. A couple hours later, we take it out of the pressure pot and we demold it and it is awesome. I actually made this bowl just because I had made a dragon egg on my last video and the bottom of it was exactly this bowl but I cut it up with a sawzall and grinded it and everything so I decided to do this one and then I wouldn't have to cut it up because it did break my heart to cut that bowl blank up. Woohoo! See how much better is, is that you showed how to make the blank. You know what? It is better that I showed the blank, but who are you? I'm the new shop assistant. I'm here to ask you questions that viewers might ask. That sounds pretty convenient. Are you going to be asking me like genuine questions people would really want to know, or are you going to be trolling me a little bit? I'm going to ask you serious questions that people may be curious about. But I will also have a little fun with you. That sounds like a lot of fun, as long as we try to keep it classy and don't get your feelings hurt with some of my answers. I cannot get my feelings hurt. I am an artificial intelligence voice. I do not even have a name. I suggest your viewers give me a name. I think that's a great idea. People could go to the comments after the video and give you a name. Keep it classy, please. But we need to get back to this video, and I'm just going to call you Johnny Number 5 for now. So let's get on with this video. What I'm doing now is I'm turning the what's going to be the bottom of the bowl. I pretty much need to have most of this done because I'm going to be doing a resin finish. At the very end, I'm going to flip it back around and clean up the bottom part and then resin that. But as of right now, I really need to have this thing all the way where I want it. And then what I'm doing now here is I'm going to clean off the center of that. And then we're going to go ahead and get a forcener bit and kind of make an outline where I need to put the mortise. This bowl is held on to the lathe with what we call coal jaws. And all it is is it's held on with those rubber feet that are black and yellow spinning around. So it's very important, as long as you can, have the bottom of the bowl supported. And then when you don't have it supported, just be as careful as you can not to dig in too fast and actually just push straight into the piece instead of go side to side because you can yank that thing right off of that lathe. I like to get the jaw that I'm going to use and actually put it in there and make sure that the dovetails kind of line up. And then uh, we're going to go ahead, once that's good, you go ahead and sand it. And we don't have to sand it very much because we're going to use a resin finish. So I just went to like 240 or 320. And then I'm going to go ahead and put these other jaws back in there and put it on the lathe. And now we're going to start getting some ribbons coming off of this thing. Hey, Jake, what kind of turning tools are those? That's an excellent question, Johnny5. These are all easy wood tools, negative rakes. I use the negative rakes for all the stuff that I do with resin. It keeps you from having chip out and having bad cuts. Uh, a lot of these are done with the finisher, which is just a circle cutter. They have square cutters and pointy cutters, and then they have a pointy cutter that's extra pointy, and they are fantastic for having ribbons come off, just like the ones you're seeing on the screen right now. Those are carbide tools. I have heard that people that use carbides are not real wood turners. Johnny Five, settle down, spark plug. You can't start trolling until you actually get a real name. But in case you really think that way, carbides are an excellent way for a beginner to get involved in wood turning. There's a real low learning curve. They don't have to sharpen anything. You can just buy the tools and then get right to turning. But enough about that. Let's get back to this project. 
I have the outside of this bolt turned about how I want it. So I'm going to take my attention to go to the inside of it. As you can see right now, it's pretty centered where I put that cup in the middle of the, the blank when we poured it, made it to where this thing is, is pretty balanced. It's not bouncing around too much. It's not perfect, but it's way better than just guessing whenever you're trying to save room in the middle of the blank. Uh, well, I've done it several times where it's just rattling all over the shop, but I think I did a pretty good job on this one. And I think right here, I'm using a number one hollower. All that is is a finisher, but it's a little bit smaller and it totally digs in there and hollows these things out with no problem at all. Yeah, you can see it getting after it right now. This is my favorite part of the project right here where I get everything round and I turn the speed up a little bit. It's a little bit over a thousand RPMs and you just let the ribbons fly. It is so cool. And now we're just gonna get the bottom of this thing smoothed out and then uh, kind of just go over it the last couple times to make sure that, that we've got all the big the big ruts out of it. I'm just using a regular finisher to do this process, but if you have like a pro size finisher, it works so much better because the circle is so much bigger. So all of the ruts you put in there with the number one hollower, you can take out with a bigger circle and then it helps you out with sanding quite a bit. Hey Jake, how far are you going to sand up to? I would normally sand a bowl like this up to a thousand and then use abrasive paste and then use wax as a finish. But we're going to use a resin finish on this one, so I'm only going to go to 320. And I'm not even sure I had to go that far because this stuff is going to cover in all the cracks and, and all of the sanding marks. It's going to it's gonna mask all that with the resin. Wow, it glows. Nothing gets past you, Johnny Five. I can't wait to see how you apply a resin finish. You're going to have to wait just a little bit longer. I'm going to do a full tutorial video on how to apply a resin or epoxy finish to a bowl. I'm going to put it down in the description when I'm done. And if you're new to YouTube, the description is right below that thumbs up button. So go ahead and hit it on your way over there. See what I did there, Johnny? Oh, yes. If being subtle was within your reach, you wouldn't have arms. <laughs> Dang, relax, man. We can't relax right now because it's time to flip this thing back around in the cold jaws. We're going to go ahead and put those back on, flip it around, and we're going to support it. And we're going to go ahead and smooth out where that dovetail is. This is probably the scariest part of the whole thing. You're almost done. You're so close to the finish line. You have to sand in there without sanding the new resin that we just put down. You're going to hand sand in there while the dog's barking next door. Once you get it off the lathe, all the stress is pretty much over. You just set it down and you do a UV resin. You just kind of puddle it up in there, even it out, and then go ahead and, and hit it with a torch and then put the UV light on it and you're done. And once again, I did make a bowl just like this, but I had to cut it up for that dragon egg. If you want to see that dragon egg video, it is super cool. Go right over here and check it out and we'll see you over there. Remember to give me a cool name in the comments. That's right. Give Johnny Five a new name in the comments and we'll see you over at the Dragon Egg video. See you there.